So if you would, bow your heads with me. Dear God, we come to you now at the appointed time. And dear Lord, we just ask that you just allow us to hear your message. We ask that uh, we are able to uh, hear your word, hear the message that has been prepared for us. And dear Lord, just give us the ability to absorb it and to uh, um, let it become a part of who we are. And when we go out and live, then it becomes um, a part of us and you live through us. And people experience you in the first person as you live through us. In Christ's name we pray. And everybody said, it would help if I turn it that way. All right. So we're working through a sermon series entitled uh, Making Sense Out of 2020, Making Biblical Sense Out of 2020. Kind of a kind of a huge um, task, huge enduring. And, um, but there are there are things in, in the scripture that can help us understand. And uh, even when when there are things going on in this world and, and it doesn't make sense and, and we start to wonder why on earth would this happen or or you know why is this going on or why is this being allowed to go on um, there are some biblical truths there are some things that we can find in the bible that we can build on we can build a foundation we can stand on and even in the most tumultuous and turbulent times we can still firmly stand on the foundation that the bible presents to us okay and uh um i i posted it on facebook but i got asked uh Yesterday, I was I was uh, doing some some errands, and I was a uh, I was asked like, a, "Hey, you know," and, and, and um, you know they they were we had a genuine conversation, and I and they said, "What what on earth are you going to preach about tomorrow with all that's going on?" And uh, um, I, I I said, "I don't want to sound smart alecky or, or glib, but I, I just want you to know that." Regardless of what's going on in this world, the message of Jesus Christ never changes. Okay? And the message of Jesus Christ is that he came to a broken world. And the Bible's pretty clear. None are righteous. You know the song, no, not one. And then we repeat it. No, not one. None of us are righteous. And we're all in need of a Savior. And... We get our salvation 100% through Jesus Christ. There's, there is nothing that we could ever do to earn or to add to our own salvation. And in fact, even the faith that it takes to receive salvation is actually a gift from God. So um, the message never changes. And, and, and I'll just say this. Um, in 1990, 1992, um, you can probably add up how old I'm getting. <laughs> in, in 1992 was my first presidential election. You know what the issues were? Abortion, health care, taxes, rights for the for the persecuted and the, and the minority. Sound familiar? You know, you know what I've come away with. I'm not, and you, and you know this by now that I'm not a very smart guy, right? Okay. I tell Ariane all the time, we live really, really well for as smart as I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for, I've made us a pretty good living for what I've been handed. All right. I've squeezed a lot out of this life, <laughs> and I'm not bragging. All right, but maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> okay, but. Um, so I mean, it, it's obvious that I'm I'm not a I'm not a scholar of any sorts or anything. But here's what I have come away with: <laughs> is that man not going to fix any of these problems? Huh? And and here's the other thing I want you to know from the bottom of my heart. Okay, if you voted for President Donald Trump, I love you. I love you. I love you. If you voted for Former Vice President Joe Biden, I love you, I love you, I love you. And here's the other thing I want to tell you. If you voted for Kanye West, <laughs> I love you, I love you, I love him. Okay? I'm 
I'm telling you, the message is not going to change. And the, and, and the message is love. And, and there is a chapter in the Bible that I have just kind of been um, just pondering on this week. And, and it's one that has just been on my heart and on my soul this week. And, and I'm just going to be, I, I'm just going to tell you that, hey, hey, stop. Is there a water bottle right there beside you, bud? Hey, there's a couple people that we need to, first of all, this, this guy right here, he, he does everything behind the scenes. Give him a hand. <laughs> Kyle Finney, raise your hand, Kyle Finney. Where's Richard Sutton? Give him a hand. Okay. Where's uh, Carrie D? Carrie D Sutton? I don't know where he's at. He's on the swing set down there. Okay. All right. Give him a hand. All right. How about our band, huh? How about our band? And, and I'm telling you, you won't find a better band in Nashville, Tennessee. I, I'm, Troy Angeli plays the bass. Give him a hand right there. He hates when I give him attention. Okay. Darren Brown. That dude, that dude, he should be playing for Metallica or somebody. You know, I married Bert, Dar uh, Darren. Um, when was that? I can't remember anything. Last Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Give them a hand. Darren and Jessica. Yeah. Awesome. And then Gretch and Natalie and Katie and all them. Give them a hand. All right. And then way back there in the back is my Uncle Dave. He's been the, the song leader here for... 89 years. No. <laughs> Give him a hand. I'm making fun of you. Okay. But there's a lot that goes on here, and the message never changes. But um, there's a there's a uh, there is a chapter that's just been weighing on my heart, and it's the fifth chapter out of Matthew. This is, without argument, the greatest sermon ever given. Given by Jesus Christ Himself. Okay, there's there's one verse that I'm I'm going to concentrate on, but I'm going to build up to it, and I'm, I'm going to make a point. Okay, and and, and let, let me just say this. Okay, um, I, I I have not really been consumed with a lot of the news this week, and the reason and, and here's the reason why is that. Um, I had to help bury my childhood friend's father. Somebody I went to kindergarten with passed away this week. I met with a family whose parents went to the hospital. With COVID, they thought the dad was doing better, and then he got put on a vent, and it became clear he was not going to make it. His wife is on the same floor, four doors down, not allowed to meet. They FaceTimed their last moments together. My friend didn't see his dad for six weeks. After six weeks, the first time he saw him was laying in a casket. Mm -hmm. I met with Sherry and, and Teddy. Teddy could barely hold his head up and he was still teasing Sherry. What he? He was. He kept saying, "She's she's beating me, Aaron." <laughs> and I I know what's at stake. Listen, I, I I'm I'm a halfway intelligent person. I keep up on the current events. I know what what's at stake here. I know that some of the issues that drive people. And 
I know you people vote for your convictions and, and God bless you. But Jesus Christ gives a sermon. And this is what he says. He speaks about the poor in spirit, that they will be blessed. And he said, well, what's the poor in spirit? Those are the people who know that they need a savior, that they know that they can't do it on their own. And he talks about blessed are those who mourn. And that's a that's a all encompassing word. It's those whose hearts are broken, but who mourn because of the devastation of sin. And we see continually the devastation of sin and what it does to the human race. Blessed are the meek, those who, who are humble, those who, who are not arrogant or proud. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who have a passion about them. And those who are merciful, who are able to show mercy. Those who are pure in heart, who, who try. I mean, Jesus was, I mean, he, he wasn't against morals. I mean, we, we don't preach morality here, but, you know, we don't preach against morals. You know, we want people to, to act right and to do what's right and not to be hateful and mean and, and break laws. And it says that blessed are peacemakers. I mean, how how many think we need a few peacemakers in this world right now, huh? We, we need some peacemakers, right? Or am I wrong? And it says, blessed are the peacemakers because they will be sons of God. Blessed are those that are persecuted. And here's the thing right now. If you feel persecuted because of your faith, let, let me be real blunt for you or to you, okay? If, if you feel persecuted for your faith, that means that you're doing something right. That you're being persecuted because of your faith. If you... if I mean, Jesus Christ said it himself. He said, if you become my disciple, you have to give up everything. You have to give up your will. You have to give up your plan for your life. You have to pick up my cross. You have to pick up my plan for your life. I'm just going to be honest with you. <laughs> and I don't mean this any mean way or anything. And this is this being the pastor here is one of the greatest honors of my life. But I'm going to be honest with you, my childhood dream was not to be a preacher. Fought it for years, okay? But at some point, you got to buy into his plan, okay? So, I mean, he says that you got to give it up, pick up his cross, and then he tells you, and when you do that, here is a guarantee. And the guarantee is that you're going to be persecuted, all right? And that is why it is so important for us to come together as a body of Christ. You know your attendance here is more than just listening to some songs and to listen to me ramble on up here for however minutes I do it, okay? You realize that there's more to that. You realize that there's a brotherhood, a fellowship, a family that exists here. And when someone is not here for whatever reason, and I know there are tons of reasons why we can't meet and why some people can't get out, I, I'm, I'm good with that. I understand it. But that is why all of what's going on in the world feels like it's getting worse. And then here's the other thing is that the problems of the world, they're bleeding into the church. And they're bleeding into the church. And now, now here, here's the deal. The Bible's pretty clear. The world won't come in through the wall and defeat us. That won't happen. Do you know how the church gets defeated? We bring it in for them. And then we defeat each other. All right. And, and, and here's here, here's this, one of the sad things. You know, I, I deal with families. And, and when families come to a point of divorce and stuff and, and I get it, all right, I get it. But when they come to a point of divorce, you know, you know, one thing they hardly ever fight over is uh, you know, who gets the church. You know, they'll fight over records and and they'll fight over all kinds of stuff. But the devil's smart and he knows that he can defeat us brick by brick. 
Because here's the deal. Every time a family comes into this church, it's a brick. It's, it's placed in there. And that's what we're building on. Paul's clear on that. Paul, Paul says, you know, we all have our time. We have, all have our error. And we all have our, our time and place when it's our turn to lay the foundation of this life that we live through your family and through your church. And he says what you're supposed to do is, is build with really good material. All right? Because there's going to be another generation on top of you that's going to build on top of you. And what happens is sometimes a generation doesn't come through in whatever kind of way. And they don't use good materials. And their foundation, their layer of foundation is not very strong. And then when you start to build on top of that, it doesn't withstand the weight. Okay? And that's where things fall apart. And he goes on, <clears throat> pardon me, and he says, blessed are they who are persecuted and they are reviled and they are hated because that's being done against Christ who lives through us. And we're supposed to, if we, if we do what the apostles taught us, we're supposed to rejoice when we're persecuted because that means that we're worthy to be persecuted against. Because somebody saw Jesus inside of us. And he says we're supposed to be salt and light and have an effect on this world. Okay? And then he has, and here's, the, and here's I'm, I'm finally there, okay? That's my introduction. <laughs> and here's the verse, 20. It says, For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Right? So what's what's being said there? What's being taught? Do we have to be the most holy, the most righteous, you know, the most moral people on earth? Or are, are we all at a race and we gotta get there? Because the scribes and the Pharisees, they were they were pretty good at it, all right? Here's what's being said. All right. Their religion, their actions their moralistic behavior, their religious behavior had become almost a coat and an armor of pride that they were doing it better than anybody else. And that's why a Pharisee could stand up and say, dear, in his prayer and say, dear God, thank you for not making me like this tax collector. And he was saying this out loud, you know, like this tax collector standing next to me who's, you know, the scum of the earth. Thank you for not making me him. Thank you for making me, me. Okay? And here's sometimes sometimes our behavior and sometimes our beliefs, if we're not careful, can become prideful. And it can become the very weapon that keeps people from being attracted to Jesus. Okay? Am I, am I off? Am I hurting you too bad today or what? Because I'm preaching to myself here. You, you realize I preach to myself every Sunday. You just get to watch, right? Okay. And, and, and here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying, okay? Is that there are some things in this country that are legally permissible. And they're horrendous. They're horrendous things. Okay? But we have to be careful. Because I'm just going to tell you that I have dealt with people who did a horrible thing years and years ago because they felt like they didn't have another option. They didn't have anything else to do. And they made a decision in their youth. Okay. And they've paid for it spiritually for the last 40 years plus. The last 40 years they've lived in misery. And sometimes we as Christians can come across to those people as saying that this is the worst. This one sin is the worst sin ever. And if you've done this sin, you're done. And, and, and if you do this or if you don't do this and that and that. I mean, back in those days, if you, if you were unclean, if you had leprosy or, or any kind of unclean disease, then if someone got near you, you had to raise your hand. Realize that? And you had to tell them, unclean. So that they didn't touch you. 
Because if they touch you, then you had to go through the ceremonial cleansing. You had to go through all this and that. Okay? And so, when you got around them, they had to scream out, unclean. And unfortunately, we've placed placards and signs on people for stuff that they did so many years ago. And we make them yell out all the time, unclean. Unclean. And here's, if you don't hear anything else I say, hear this. I want you, I, I want you to be active. I want you to have passion about your beliefs. I want you to pray about who you vote for. I want you to vote your conscience. Okay? I just told you. I, I love you regardless of who you voted for. If you didn't vote, I love you. I love you. There's not anything like that that could ever get between us. I hope you know that. All right? In fact, I don't need to know who you vote for or whatever. Okay? But here's, here is... Here is the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ is the change maker. Okay? And if we change some of these laws and make certain things illegal, there are still going to exist behaviors that think it's okay and they're still going to do it. All right? So here... I'm not, I'm not saying don't vote, don't get active, don't run for something. If you, you know, if you've, if you've got a mental illness, run for something. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I'm telling you, be active. Be an active citizen. Vote your conscience. Do what you got to do. Okay. Put your signs up. Whatever you got to do. All right. I'm there with you. But here's what I need you to understand. And this is what Jesus Christ says about the law. And it's not that he came to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill it. And how did he do that? And he says, well, no longer am I going to take laws and write them on tablets of stone. Instead, we're going to write them on the hearts of men. Here's our, here's our calling. Here's our calling as a church. Okay. What are we doing? What are we doing to change the behaviors that we're so against. Okay? And I'll tell you, this church is, well, I know you people. I know you people. We've got a couple of families here that have adopted people, and I've never seen such love in all my life. Okay? I know we got step parents here that love those, their, their uh, spouse's kids like they're their own. You know, we got mixed match families that love each other like siblings. Okay, we got my parents have been divorced forever and they're both here today. Okay, with their spouses. All right. That, I mean, love, love heals a lot of things. Okay. And, 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 and I'm sorry, if I'm embarrassed you guys. All right. But I, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that, you know, they, we can come together and we can worship together. All right. What are, we going, what are we going to do as a church? Huh? How are we going to make a change? Because I, 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 laws are laws. I get that. And, and, but, you know, drugs are illegal. We don't have a drug shop problem in this country, do we? Huh? Okay. All right. And, and, and I'm, so I'm not telling you not to believe the way that you believe. That is not the message here today. But what I'm telling you is that we as a church can't give away our job to a bunch of lobbyists and to a bunch of politicians and say, here, do our job for us. Okay? And I know that I'm preaching to the choir. I know that, okay? I know that. I know that. I know you guys are good people. So just deal with me here, all right? But if we're going to make a change in this world, if we're truly against, you know, whatever, then we got to... Are, are, I met with some people this week. We have homeless high schoolers in El Dorado right now. I don't know where they're sleeping. Don't know. We met this week. Just, just concerned citizens. 
one guy reached out and we got together and, and we had a little meeting. Just a brainstorming idea. Okay? Here, there, there's some resources out there. All right? And, and some of those resources exist in some religious places. We don't know if they're going to be available or not. I don't, I don't know. What are, what are we doing? What are we doing? I mean, I, I get systems get cheated on and, and, and people game it. I, I know it. I've, listen, I've lived in El Dorado all my life. I've seen it. Know it. Generational. I've, I've seen it. Know it. Okay? But we as a church, we got to get, we, we get our conviction back. We got to get our conviction back. If, if you're against a certain thing, you know, it's great. I want you to vote. I want you to express your beliefs. I want you I want you to do it, okay? I'm not saying don't do it. It's not at all what I'm saying. But at some point, we got to do something other than scream at you, each other on Facebook, okay? We got to do something other than that. I mean, if, if we're against abortion, then are we willing to take in every teenage pregnant girl that got kicked out of her house because mom and dad don't love her anymore? Because that happens. I don't know if you know that or not, but that happens. All right. Are we willing to, to help them? Are we willing to adopt some kids? Are we willing to, to you know, feed the poor? Are we willing to, to minister to people? I mean, what are, what are we willing to do? Because these are problems. I mean, you, you, you realize what the problems, what they were complaining about in Jesus' day? They were being oppressed by the Romans. All right. And the Romans were taxing them too much. Sound familiar? That's in Jesus' day. Okay? So, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No one gets to the Father except through Him. Amen. And here's what He says. If you come to me, I will give you rest. He's saying, I'll never turn your way. The promise is, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. There's not anything this world can throw at you that can separate my love from you. But he does say, go out and tell people my teachings, my words, in such a way that they will become disciples and they will be baptized in the name of the Father, Son. In the Holy Ghost. We have to become a church of action. If you remember my first sermon at the beginning of this crazy year, it was the vision of 2020 was to be people of impact. We have to be people of impact. We can't let the noise distract us. We can't let it come in through a Trojan horse and destroy us. If you've got ill feelings towards somebody, pray about it. Get over it. Let's start moving through these troubles. Let's start a, let's start impacting our communities. Amen. Amen. And here's the deal. If, 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 <laughs> if you want to fire me after this sermon, I'll take it. All right, because I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna stand by this one. We have we have to be people of action, driven by the right thing: Christian love, Christian mercy, and Christian grace. Amen. 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 We can go after all the laws. We can change them. I'm all for that. Okay. There are some horrible things that are legal in this world. Horrible things. I, I'm appalled by it just like anybody else. But at some point, something else has to happen. And we as a church can no longer give that to a third party. That's on us. Okay? That's on us. If you're with me, raise your hand. Thank you. If you know I love you, raise your hand, please. If you think I don't love you, Come see me. Please come see me. 
Because it it would break my heart if I thought someone here didn't think I love them. Okay? I love you. Where's Dave sneak around? There he is, buddy. <laughs> He's treeing a squirrel over there. So. <laughs> You got a you got a song for that one, bud? <laughs> Usually he's right on. He may be like, oh, right. so just bow your heads real quick with me. You're. We do this a lot. If, if you're sincerely worried about this country and you want. Jesus to help this country and guide and direct and, and, and just bring us peace in this country. Just raise your hand today. Just say, dear Lord, help our country. And, and, and if you've got people who are impacted by sickness and, and it could be COVID, uh, it could be, you know, all the other diseases didn't quit. If you got somebody affected by sickness, raise your hand today and say, dear God, I, I need a touch. If you're concerned about your family and it'd be emotionally, spiritually. I mean, we're, we're doing, talking about canceling thanks, thank, Thanksgiving meals and Christmas meals and gatherings. Raise your hand and say, dear God, just be with us. If you know Jesus Christ loves you, raise your hand here this morning. Dear God, we come to you now and we are just so thankful for you. We are so thankful for you. Thankful for your love, your, your salvation, your sacrifice. And dear God, we just now just say, guide us, direct us, give us the strength, give us the resources, give us the ability to see past our differences so that we can unite for one common cause, and that is the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen. David.